Hi, it's Mr. Anderson and this is AP Physics Essentials. Video 76 is on the conservation laws. And conservation just means stays the same. So let's say I have seven Legos and I put them together. The number of Legos is going to be conserved. If I take them apart, we still have seven Legos. If I put them together in a different arrangement, we still have seven Legos. The Legos are being conserved. Now let's say put them together like this. Well, the number of Legos isn't conserved. What does that mean? Legos came from somewhere else, and that means I hadn't defined my system correctly. I had what's called an open system, and so we're having new Legos come in, or we could have some of those Legos leave. And so once we define a proper system with the correct objects inside it, then whatever's inside is going to be conserved. Now, what could be inside? It could be the amount of energy, it could be the charge, it could be the momentum, either linear momentum or angular momentum. It's essentially everything within that system that's going to stay the same. A system is a series of two or more objects that are separated from their environment. And if there's no boundary between the system and the environment, we call that an open system. In order for the conservation laws to apply, we have to have a closed system or an isolated system. Once we have an isolated system, then we have these conservation laws. In other words, inside that system, we're going to maintain the same amount of energy, or we could have the same amount of charge, or the same amount of momentum, either linear momentum or angular momentum. And so an open and closed system is important to understand. An open system is any system where we can have matter and energy either entering into that system or leaving. And so for us to have an isolated system, we have to have no movement of energy or matter into or out of that system. But once we do, once we define that closed system, then the conservation laws apply. So imagine I've got an electric circuit like this, and the dotted line represents a system. So this system right here, would you say that that's an open system or a closed system? Well, it's going to be an open system because we clearly have energy coming in and energy going out, and so that's going to be an open system. What would a closed system look like? It would be the whole circuit itself. Now, it's hard to make something that's totally uh, separated from the universe, but for solving a physics problem like this, this would be a great closed system. Let's say we're looking at a closed system here. So I'm going to drop a basketball with an apple on the top of it. Let's watch what happens. So if I were to give you that as a problem to figure out what's going on, if you were to identify the systems, so that apple itself, would you call that open or closed? I would call that an open system. So we're clearly not accounting for the basketball. So if we were to make this our system, that also would be an open system because I'm not taking into account uh, the floor, or if you watch this, the apple actually bounces off of the roof. And so this would be a better representation of this closed system. And so once we've defined what that closed system is, then we have conservation of energy, charge, and momentum. And so if we say this is a system, me and a bowling ball on a string, if we say that's the system, we're going to have conservation of energy within that system. So that, that bowling ball has a certain amount of potential energy, and when I let it go, it's going to be converted to kinetic, back into potential energy, but it's not going to hit me in the head because we're not going to have energy coming into the system. Now, if somebody were to push on that bowling ball, then we would have an open system. We'd add energy to it, and it wouldn't be conserved. If we were to look at conservation of charge, here I'm going to charge up this glass rod, bring it close to an electroscope, and you can see what's going on there. As we've discussed in previous videos, what's going on is the electrons are actually moving within the conductor of the electroscope. Now, it's not like we're adding new charges to the system or we're pulling them away. They're just moving from one location to another. The charge is being conserved. Same thing applies to momentum. And so in this famous Newton's cradle, what's being transferred between each side of that swinging pendulum is going to be linear momentum. And same thing when I drop the basketball. We're transferring some of that momentum of the basketball into the apple, but the total amount of linear momentum is conserved. And the th same thing applies to the angular momentum of this gyroscope. And so once you understand what that closed system is, all of those energy, charge, or momentum is going to be conserved within that system. And so did you learn to define open and closed or isolated systems and apply the conservations of energy, charge, and momentum? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.